Hey folks, welcome back to the ACRP Bonsai channel. I'm here with my Oridono Nishiki Japanese maples. Here in the center is my mother tree. And when I bought this back in 2021, the tree was about five to six feet tall. And as you can see, I've got it clipped down pretty well. You can see some of these stubs here. These were the sites of some of the air layers I did over the last couple of years. I think I got most excited about this species, not just because of the amazing variegated color that it has, but also because when I got it, this was one of the first trees that I ever air layered. I did five air layers that first uh, session and it was 100% successful, so it got me really excited. Here on the table, I've got one, two, three of the air layers that I did, and then I've also got a rooted cutting in this smaller pot here. I did seven or eight air layers all in all, but I gave a few of them away to friends. So this is what I've got left, is this grouping of five. So before we get started, I wanna talk about this material and give you a little bit more background and just talk about the structure we have here and how I see these trees going together. So for starters, this mother tree is a grafted tree. We'll take a closer look in a minute. And it's got like an interesting kind of a wedge graft, but the great thing about it is it's extremely smooth. There's like no bump at all to the graft. And I really am confident that this is going to slowly disappear over time as the bark starts to gray up. So that's really cool. I planted it in this large terracotta um, I would have liked to put it in something larger last year when I repotted it, but I also knew that I was heading uh, from New York to Virginia and I needed to keep it in something that was modest in size so it would be more easy, easy to transport. So moving up, you can see some of the major work I've already done on the tree. Here is one of the biggest uh, scars. It's almost completely healed. And this one here, I believe, was the origination of this air layer here. Moving up, you can see another one here. And this spot here where I took an air layer, it's got kind of a knob. It's, there's some inverse taper here. And then these two branches coming out of the side are pretty prominent. So I'm probably only gonna be able to keep one or the other of these. I wanted to make sure it healed well before I really did some major surgery on it. But I'm gonna come back here at midsummer and really carve this out to get a better uh, flow to the line of the tree. As you can see right here, you've got a really long straight section. And the taper, you know, the taper could be better to get reduced back. You can see we've got a nice little side branch starting here. I don't know if this is the correct angle we want, but this node is perfect. It's only about one and a half to two centimeters long. And once we get this to thicken up a little bit, this is gonna be a great transition. Hopefully we can get a branch to come out this way. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and understand that this top part of the branch, we are gonna let grow for now, but this is all sacrificial growth. Maybe we'll even air layer it again in the future in that whole edge up. There's a nice little bud coming here, but I don't know if we're gonna keep that or not because we do have this branch opposite it. We may let it grow for a season or two just to help with the healing process. It's always nice to have a bud below or above any major cut, and that's gonna encourage energy from the tree to go to that area and help heal the, heal the wound. As you continue up, we've got this pretty solid branch that curves out this way, and it's kind of a smooth arc. I actually like this movement because you can kind of see that we've got a flow here going to this tree. So this is gonna be the future apex of the tree. This one final branch here is a little bit long and strong, so this may end up getting pruned back in the future, but we're just gonna let that grow for now. So in this stage, because we've already taken all of the major air layers off of this tree, we're gonna to try to slow down the growth. We're going to let some of these grow. We're gonna do a little bit of pruning midsummer, and then we're gonna start doing the refinement work to clean up these wounds. Now moving on, let's talk about this one next. Now this tree here, is pretty ugly. You know, this branch section here is really long and straight. Uh, it doesn't have any taper to it. This branch right here in the center, I'm probably gonna eventually cut this off. And then we're gonna use this here as the trunk line right here. It does reduce a little bit and this will make a more graceful curve to this movement going that way. And then here in the center, this is something that was kind of an accident. Now, I did leave quite a bit of growth on this you can see this long node here, but this is actually dyed all the way back to the base here. There is a branch here in the back that's alive, and I'm hoping that this hangs on through the season. So we will be pruning this down and cleaning it up. Over here, this one died back, but it didn't die back any farther than the node. And this, this trunk line here is growing quite We had to jump the candy kitchen in the recording order because this little tree here is already starting to break bud. We'll take a closer look so you can see what that looks like. This little tree here has some pretty good movement in it. You can see these 
wrapped wires I've got out of the way, but you can see there's a slight curve in the trunk line here. It's not super exaggerated, but it's some graceful movement. I was able to get that movement into the tree with this silicone wrapped aluminum last year. This tree is also already just starting to open. These, these buds at the end, this one right here is like already opening. All right, this air layer here is probably the most exciting one of the smaller trees here. It's got some really great natural movement. I didn't actually do any wiring on these trunk lines. It's already got a nice curve to it. And it's actually like a double trunk down here below the soil line. We'll see that later. But then this one splits into two. And although it's a little bit unusual, I think I really like the flow of this one. And this has got a graceful movement that way. You can see we had this movement here. So I can already tell that if we turn it this way and possibly do an angle change, this is gonna really fit in well with that mother tree. It could go either over here or possibly over here. I haven't decided yet, but once we get these out of the pots, uh, we can take a, you know, we can scramble them around and kind of see what looks good. Also on this tree, I got it in this terracotta water saucer. Say that 10 times fast. I actually really like these for training pots. They're very inexpensive and then also they breathe so that allows for a you know, quicker uh, wet dry cycle. I just simply drilled it, drilled through. I've got a big hole there and then I drilled some wire holes as well. So for about six to eight dollars, you got a really nice shallow round training pot for your Japanese maples. I highly recommend that. If you want to spend a little bit more, you can also make a training pot out of one of these outdoor glazed pots. And these are made of some sort of a material. I don't know exactly what it is. It's not, it's not ceramic, but it's not terracotta. It's just kind of like a some sort of a stoneware material. And then these ones take a little bit more effort to drill through, but same procedure as I did with the terracotta there. You can see I've got the drainage hole and then some wire holes in the bottom. And then you can keep your training pot a little more attractive. It's got a little glaze to it. So this looks really nice on the bench. I think these were a little more, they were about 10 to $12, but not bad considering it's got a nice size and then it's nice and shallow for developing that root flare. Okay, not a whole lot to say on this one. This is just a small rooted cutting. Uh, this little tree here, I actually, I think I had it just stuck into one of my um, one of my plants. I had it just stuck into one of my other Japanese maples and it, and it rooted. So I didn't do anything crazy. It was kind of more of like a, a chance uh, rooted cutting. I did wire this earlier on uh, at the end of fall last year. And you can see I've got some nice graceful movement. So as we put this composition together, you can see I'm gonna be able to get some nice flow even on the smaller trees. All right, we're gonna move in a little bit closer so you guys can get a look at these trees and then we're gonna start doing, and then we're gonna pull them out of the pots and take a look at the roots. All right, so let's take a look at our first tree. As always, we've got to remove the stuff off the top here. Got some pretty good moss growth. I picked this back and been weeding this all through the fall and winter. in on the bottom because this one here only had one exit hole I had to wrap a wire around a thicker wire as a straight bar across the hole I do have this in 100% Akadama. Don't get it twisted. I'm stingy with my soil, so I'm going to be saving this and reusing it. 
As I'm going through here, I'm being as careful as I can not to break any of these roots. We are going to have to do some pruning back, but I want to make all those choices actively. I don't want to just leave it to chance by butchering the roots out of the edge. We've already got some really big circling roots. Now these ones here, of course, we will be pruning these off because they're just going to be way too long. So as you can see, we've been able to develop a pretty good root spread here. There's a lot of imperfections on this, but I think we've made a lot of forward progress since I planted it a year ago. There's a really big open spot here. Now, when I originally planned this, I thought this was going to be the front of the tree. And now that I'm seeing this, I'm kind of reconsidering. You'd have this really big open spot toward the front. So because of that, I think what I'm going to do is turn around the tree and we're going to have the exact opposite design in our our planting is going to flow that direction instead of that direction. So I'm going to do a little bit more work here, get a few of these knuckles removed, and then we'll move on to the next tree. This is kind of a problematic root, so eventually we're probably going to remove it, but we're going to try to keep pushing it back and get some more root development a little bit higher up. Later on, we may come in here and do a thread graft, but we can decide that later. For now, we're just going to get this tree on its way to further development in this group planting. Now, normally we totally trim this down to all the way against the trunk, but we've gotten a fair way down in there and there's no, re to, no reason to overwork it. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Remember, while you're pruning these trees, because this is a group planting, it's going to take some time. So remember to come back through with a spray bottle and keep these roots moist. All right, here we are with our first air layer. I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up and take an initial look, and then we'll go back to a time lapse for the root work. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all this moss cleaned off. And this moss here is like really shaggy. It's really good for uh, when you're in the developmental phase because it covers the surface really well and it really works great for that moisture retention while you're trying to develop the roots of the tree. Uh, when we get into a full planting though, this stuff grows a little bit too vigorously and actually can kind of like choke up and keep the trunks of the tree a little bit too uh, moist. So we may want to try to go for a moss that's a little finer. As you can see, I use this silicone wrapped aluminum even to secure the tree in place. I want to make really sure, as to the best of my ability, that I'm avoiding wire scars. All right, let's take a look at the bottom, see if we can get this out. set that out of the way. Okay, so this air layer here is far from perfect on its root development. As you can see here, we've got the one main trunk, and then we've got another side branch down here. If we look at the bottom, you can see that it originated from one branch right here. And then this side branch is lower, but all the root development happened a little bit higher all around this node of the primary trunk. So this secondary trunk here 
is really has no roots originating. It's getting all of its energy from kind of back here. So this is all really interesting, not really perfect. So this is still gonna, we're gonna plant it low enough that it still looks like this pair of trunks here and this third trunk are actually two separate trees that are just really close together. As this develops over time, I think it'll start looking a lot better. All right, here we are with the smallest of the air layers. Let's get this out of the pot. It's actually some really good fine moss here, but it's got this hairy moss growing through it. We may have to just sacrifice that. And as you can see here, this smallest tree is really the farthest along. It's already starting to push buds. So this thing is ready to be in leaf here in the next week or two. Be really delicate here as I unwind this tree. I don't want to cause any damage to these delicate buds or to the roots down underneath. All right, there we go. I think we're free. As you can see, again, I use the silicone wrapped aluminum to create a really soft, tool to keep the tree in place and not damage anything. I'm going to go ahead and just cut those wires and get those out of the way. We are free. Come on, little buddy. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, we're just stuck to the screen on the bottom. When I first started, I was using this kind of lower quality screen material, um, and it really just sticks to the roots. There you go. This is that cheap yellow plastic screen. This is actually something that's used for patching drywall and I had it laying around. So hey, when you're desperate, you use whatever you got. All right. And this one is really, really young. This air layer might have actually been from last year, not two years ago. This one here, we're just gonna do some really gentle work, try to get these straightened out, give it a little trim. We're not gonna do a whole lot. There we go. There we go. All right, we got a downward growing root here. Definitely wanna get that trimmed off. All these other ones are Pretty good, just how they are. Now, I know what you're thinking. These scissors I shouldn't be using on the roots, but these are due for a sharpening anyway, so they'll be okay. All right, for such a young one, this actually has a fairly decent root spread. There's a little bit of gap here, but we'll see how that develops in the future. Looks like the bottom wound is almost fully healed. We have one more tree to go. All right, here's our final tree. And this one with all the dieback, I'm definitely concerned about it. So we're gonna take a look, see how it's doing under the, under the soil here. This lime green moss, I really love this stuff. I found it in this little hollow on West Point.
All right, so the roots on this final tree have developed actually pretty well. Some of these are a little bit strong, so they need to be trimmed back, like this guy here is looking a little out of control. I'm definitely gonna trim off that upward pointing root. Some of these other ones can be cut back to get a little more developed further in. But overall, this thing has already started to develop a nice nabari. All right, this over here, that's pointing straight up, so we need to get that out of there. All right, let's see what's going on over here. Yeah, these ones here, they're not perfect. I don't think we're gonna over, over prune this. Let's get that one out of there. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Remember, we've got a lot of years to develop this nabari. So we don't want to overly prune and weaken the tree right now. Remember, this thing is only a few years away from air layer. So it's already got a pretty good flare going on and we can always continue to refine this in the future. As you can see, it's already off to a pretty great start in developing a nabari. It's not perfect, there's a gap right here, but for the composition, it's gonna work really well. And I'm excited to see how this progresses in the future. All right, last but not least, we've got our little rooted cutting here. So let's get that out of the pot and see how it's doing. Oh, and that moss is really taking over here. I guess we'll get that all out in one piece. Looks like it used to have a little side branch that's died back there. I like to go underneath with a chopstick to kind of make sure it's not adhered to the bottom before we pull on the trunk. And let's see how that little guy developed. All right, small but mighty. Okay, not much to work with here, folks, but this thing is gonna have plenty of time to develop. I'm gonna go ahead and prune this back pretty hard. We got this root that goes straight down there. We're gonna take that off. It's starting to, tr it's trying to do a little bit of ramification over here. So there's that. And then this one here, again, let's try to push it back to where it's starting to divide a little bit. Let's really encourage it to develop something. Now that's not the most beautiful root system there, but this one here is gonna be buried under the soil line. So we're not gonna see it. And we're gonna have time to develop this over the coming years. All right, and this one here does look like it died all the way back. I'm gonna go ahead and prune that right there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a nub and let that die back naturally. Maybe it'll send another bud in the future, we'll see. All right, here we are. Here we have a really beautiful shallow rectangle from now Tokutake. I picked this up at the National Show. I'm really excited about it. It's got this turquoise color and then some flecking of kind of a dark gray. I think this is gonna look really beautiful with the colors of the Oridono Nishiki. So to get started, let's go ahead and lay an aeration layer. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this large green pumice in the bottom. And I haven't mixed this with Akadama. I'm gonna put a little bit over the top and as we plant the trees, it's gonna settle in pretty nicely. Let's make sure we have a nice thin layer of that at the bottom here. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. A little bit of Akadama. You can see there's a little bit of dust in there, but that'll be all, all right. That'll all rinse through just fine. All right, so we're just gonna get that settled in there. As you can see, I've already got the pot prepped with a bunch of tie wires um, through, the, through the wire holes, and I ran a few more across the drainage holes as well to make sure that I had plenty of opportunity for tying positions. All right, as promised, we are not gonna waste the Akadama from our trees. Oh, so that is here. So we're gonna actually start with that.
there's a little bit of roots in here. I pulled most of them out, but I'm really not too worried about it. All that bacteria and other biological stuff down in this pre-used soil is gonna be great. I, of course, I've done some treatment on these trees during the winter to make sure there aren't any pests. I'm not really worried about that. I think the benefit of having the living soil is gonna far outweigh any risk of pests. And of course, I'm saving myself an arm and a leg and not having to rebuy the Akadama. All right, so we've got this little layer down first. I'm gonna put a little bit more down, a little mound, so that we can set that first tree. We're actually gonna turn the tree this way. And so our composition is gonna flow over here to the right, your right, my left. Because it's flowing to the right, we're gonna offset this tree slightly to the left. And it's gonna go somewhere in here. This is really a pretty powerful tree. I do wanna make sure that the trunk lines have a good visual angle. And as this develops over time, it's gonna have a really nice S-curve through here. One other reason that this orientation works really well is if you remember, right over here on the backside, we had our largest scar. So by putting this to the back of the composition, we're hiding it from the viewer up front. That's gonna be really useful. All right. So we've got some nice strong roots here. I wanna run this wire across the back so we're going to secure that right here. And we're going to tighten these all down a little bit more once we get this composition set. I'm just putting this in place to hold it right here. Put this other wire over here. And we're going to come across the front here. So I'm going to use this. So you can see I've actually used the end of this first wire and then I'm attaching it across to this other wire. This allows us to create more of like a matrix to hold down the, the roots here. It's going to spread the pressure out across all of these roots and this tree is going to be pretty stable just from right. This is the second tree of the composition. I think it's really important and it does have a really nice graceful flow in that direction. So. Let's see what looks the best here. I think because we have this smaller tree on the outside, it's gonna look better to have the tree a little bit closer to that first tree. And I'm gonna put this to the front. Like I said, this is one of my favorites of the grouping. And I think this is gonna really accentuate the flow of this planting. So I'm gonna position this down through here. All right. Actually, what I'm gonna to need to do, I'm gonna to have to unwire that because I wanna get these roots underneath that same wire. All right, so we're going backwards a little bit. We wanna get this all in the same system. And if these roots are overlapping, that's great. You know, we are really okay if all of these roots start to fuse together in the future. Let's do a little bit of Akadama underneath, and then let's settle that down into place here. All right, so that is gonna work really well. Let's get this wire down there and get this secured. This one here, I really want this tree, it's, it's trying to fall forward. I want it to be back a little bit more. So I'm gonna to try to get a little bit more Akadama underneath the front end there to prop it up. Once we get this wired in, we'll be able to 
really set the position. A few of these roots are coming upwards too, so I'm gonna have to trim those. Let's get rid of that guy there. And this one here also is coming straight up. We don't need you. All right, that's a much better position. We've got the tree propped up where we want it. I'm gonna come across here. Let's see if I can secure that tree in place. Rotate it just slightly. I want to make sure we can really see all three of those trunk lines. All right, there's number two. This tree has got some good flow and it's already kind of headed that direction. There we go. So we've got this. So these two are about six inches apart. We're going to spread these out a little farther and make sure that we have a spread of closer to eight inches. And then also front to back, this tree is probably the farthest forward. This, this other tree is going to be forward of the main tree, but it's going to be a little bit further back than this other tree. I think right about here is going to be a pretty good spot for it. Now, as you can see, I don't have another wire up here to tie down on this side of the tree, but this wire here, I can bend downward. And it's going to be perfectly fine. That'll, that'll help hold these roots down. And we're going to be really careful with this composition. So we're not really worried about the trees falling out of the pot. I'm going to secure that down with a little bit of soil. All right. Now we have our ugly tree that's for back here. And this is just going to help fill out the composition. There aren't a lot of branches on this main tree down here in the lower part. So we're just going to put this in the background to help fill in the space. This is going to help create a nice full composition. And this one is actually going to be fairly close to this tree. I'm going to tuck this in here and maybe these roots will fill that space um, where there are no roots coming off the tree in the back. I'm going to come around to the front and look in the camera and see how this composition looks from the other side. Yeah, this is going to work out really well. All right, we're going to take this first wire across here. Really anchor that in. Again, we're going to reuse the wire from this other tie down. And that's going to really help us create a real solid interconnected structure. I've seen a lot of these other videos where they plant forests and they've got like 100 chopsticks down in the bottom of the planting. That may work for those really young trees with no roots, but we don't have to get crazy. And it would be a pain in the butt to change or clean out in the future. All right. There's that one there. This can come across here. I'm not going to tie it yet. We do have one more tiny little baby tree to put in place. And here she is. All right, so as you know, we've already started to establish this flow in the my and in your your right, my left direction. And I want to put one more little tree in here. This is going to help fill it in and it's going to create further accentuation of that movement to the right. All right, this one's going to be real simple. This is... I want to make sure that this primary line has got, even that primary line there has got a little bit of a lean to it. And 
And I'm okay with it creeping out over the edge of the pot here. I think that's gonna look kind of neat. I've twisted these wires here, but they're going to pull back to the center point. But I can use them in this direction as long as I tie this end of the wire across. It'll create the tension we need. Right there. I'm going to come in here with a pair of pliers and tighten that one. leaning a little bit there we go I think that's what we're looking for right there and we've been able to keep these roots nice and moist so far so let's not dilly-dally here we want to make sure we get these planted in All right, I think I am happy with this composition. And remember, we may take another air layer here and we certainly have a lot of time to make more rooted cutting. So I will eventually start filling this in a little more. What I can see over here is the opportunity to put a nice little path in between this section of three and this section of two. So I'm really excited to see how this grouping progresses over time. Let me get this one tied in as well. Get this all anchored in nice and tight. All right, I'm gonna come around one more time to the front and make sure this stuff is right where I want it so that I have the opportunity to make any small adjustments before I finish potting it up. All right, I really like that. Okay, so we've got different spacing, we've got different uh, depth of field as far as the placement of the trees and even this little baby tree here is a nice little flirtatious addition to the composition really showing that movement over here to the right hand side i'm pretty excited and if you guys think this looks cool now just wait until it's in leaf So we got a few dead branches I want to trim off from last year. This looks like that might be a living bud. I don't want to cut it quite yet. That's gone. This is definitely dead here. And oh yeah, that entire trunk is completely dead. We will carve that in June, but I'm just going to take it out. It is still a little bit of an eyesore on the composition, so I want to get that out of the way. We'll carve this all the way down in June. All right, this little branch here looks dead. I'm going to trim that guy off as well. You're gone. That might be alive. That first node, we'll leave it and see what happens. What else we got here? We got a few more little tips we can bring back. No need to leave those. All right, a couple more. All right, how are we looking over here? Okay, we're good. A little dead nub there. Let's get that back. All right, I 
think, folks, we are just about ready to call this a day. I'm going to get this outside. I'm going to get it watered in, and I'll put a little bit of moss to top dress. All right, I took a wider shot here so you guys can see the composition from the front. So we've already got a really nice movement here in the primary trunk, and this is dictating the flow of the entire composition. This one here just has a gentle movement slightly to the right-hand side. You got a strong right-hand movement here. This branch back here is just gonna fill out the tree. And then we've got, again, gentle movement flowing this way in line with the main trunk. Let's see how this develops through the spring and we'll have future episodes to continue working on this company. Here we go, getting it nice and watered in. What a beautiful pot. You can see it so much better out here in the daylight. All right, folks, that's it for this episode of Acer P Bonsai. Thanks for tuning in. As you can see, we added a little bit of aesthetic moss at the end. And then I really love using this fine grain pumice to create little pathways. That white and gray really sets off the color. And in the front there, I've got a gemstone, purple amethyst, one of my favorites. And it just kind of creates a mystical look to the whole composition. It's a little bit outside of the box, but you know, this is a really vibrant tree. So I don't think there's really much we can do to take away from what it's going to look like come spring. Like, subscribe, hit me up in the comments section or DMs on Instagram. I'd love to chat about your Japanese maples or whatever else you've got going on. Thanks and have a good day.